If we do not abide in prayer, we will abide in temptation. Satan's greatest success is in making people think they have plenty of time before they die to consider their eternal welfare. Be killing sin or it will be killing you. If private revelations agree with scripture, they are needless, and if they disagree, they are false. If the word does not dwell with power in us, it will not pass with power from us. The first and principal duty of a pastor is to feed the flock by diligent preaching of the word. Fill your affections with the cross of Christ that there may be no room for sin. Christ did not die for any upon condition, if they do believe, but he died for all God's elect, that they should believe. We must not be concerned only with that which troubles us, but with all that troubles God. To those to whom Christ is the hope of future glory, he is also the life of present grace. If scripture has more than one meaning, it has no meaning at all. I do not understand how a man can be a true believer, in whom sin is not the greatest burden, sorrow and trouble. We are never nearer Christ than when we find ourselves lost in a holy amazement at his unspeakable love. The more I see of the glory of Christ, the more the painted beauties of this world will wither in my eyes. We can have no power from Christ unless we live in a persuasion that we have none of our own. If we would talk less and pray more about them, things would be better than they are in the world, at least, we should be better enabled to bear them. Christ's blood is the great sovereign remedy for sin sick souls. He who prays as he ought will endeavor to live as he prays. Unless men see a beauty and delight in the worship of God, they will not do it willingly. Nothing shall be lost that is done for God or in obedience to him. If a man teach uprightly and walk crookedly, more will fall down in the night of his life than he built in the day of his doctrine. The most tremendous judgment of God in this world is the hardening of the hearts of men. Faith, if it be a living faith, will be a working faith. He that hath slight thoughts of sin, never had great thoughts of God. Temptations and occasions put nothing into a man, but only draw out what was in him before. The greatest sorrow and burden you can lay on the Father, the greatest unkindness you can do to him is not to believe that he loves you. Every time we say we believe in the Holy Spirit, we mean we believe that there is a living God able and willing to enter human personality and change it. The purpose of our holy and righteous God was to save his church, but their sin could not go unpunished. It was, therefore, necessary that the punishment for that sin be transferred from those who deserved it but could not bear it, to one who did not deserve it but was able to bear it. When the Holy Spirit sanctifies believers, he does a complete work in them. He puts into their minds, wills and hearts a gracious, supernatural principle which fills them with a holy desire to live to God. The whole life and being of holiness lies in this. This is the new creation, 